different markets are buying their sacrificial animals and uh, meeting other people it's pertinent to follow the different uh, standard operating procedures whether it be wearing the masks or by washing the hands or uh, by uh, avoiding crowded places also the ncoc has issued certain guidelines as far as the sacrifices or qurbani are concerned and also the congregations on eid are concerned we'll be discussing that in our first segment our second story ladies and gentlemen concerns uh, the significance of Eid al-Azha. Now Eid al-Azha is around the corner on Sunday we are going to celebrate Eid al-Azha uh, and of course it's a very important occasion and it gives us an idea of uh, what sacrifice means as has been enunciated by our religion. What is the importance, what are the different protocols for the Eid al-Azha and also for sacrifice, who needs to uh, they take part in a sacrifice, who doesn't, what are the other issues that concern Eid al-Azha, we'll also be uh, uh, talking about Hajj uh, that is happening as we speak, the importance of Hajj as well in this uh, era of COVID-19 and we will be discussing different elements of that, this is our second segment, then we'll be talking about the 6th martyrdom anniversary of uh, Burhan Wani, uh, this is uh, happening today as well on this uh, very day, uh, 6 years back, uh, he was martyred by the Indian authorities. Uh, Kashmiris are observing the 6th martyrdom anniversary uh, with the solemnity, reverence and uh, the aim to uh, make an illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir uh, an area where the Muslims can profess their religions uh, and of course uh, in a very open environment and that uh, the different uh, references that have been put in the United Nations uh, for uh, the referendum uh, for the right of self-determination for the Kashmiris can finally see the light of day. This is going to be our third segment. Let's begin with our first story, ladies and gentlemen, and that concerns COVID-19. Uh, the different uh, SOPs uh, that are need to be followed, especially in the wake of Eid al azha that is around the corner, as well as the positivity ratio that is increasing in uh, Pakistan and the different SOPs that have been put uh, into place by the NCOC. We've been joined by uh, Dr. Sardar Shoeb Khan. He's a consultant in general medicine. Dr. Saab, thank you very much to have joined us. Dr. Saab, uh, uh, Eid al azha is around the corner and of course in Pakistan across the world people sacrifice animals, they go to different markets to buy the animals. How important is it to follow the SOPs to wear the masks? We not only have the issue of COVID-19 but also Congo fever although it's not there. Nevertheless, we need to follow, uh, we need to be very careful that we do not get it. What's your take on that sir and how important is it to follow the SOPs? Assalamu alaikum uh, to you Umar and uh, all your viewers and uh, I would uh, uh, say that yes, uh, coronavirus is uh, spreading uh, in Pakistan. Uh, as we can see from the data, uh, the positivity rate is hovering between 3 and 4 percent and uh, the number of people who are getting admitted to hospitals, that is very gradually, but still it is increasing. So uh, it is extremely important that uh, we get this message across to our people that uh, COVID-19 is uh, still around and it can still uh, spread among us. Um, now, uh, which exact advice to give to the whole uh, community is difficult actually, uh, given that the risk for different people is different. So, uh, you know, it has to be individualized. People need to understand that different people have different risk of this disease. So if people have uh, previous comorbidities, if they are elderly, then they are at higher risk. So the level of protection that they need, the, the importance of vaccination, the importance of wearing masks, the importance of washing hands and, and uh, you know, um, exercising caution while going to um, places that are crowded increases if, if you have uh, comorbidities or if you're older. But if you're younger, then obviously the risk is lower. Uh, but the most important thing, in my opinion, Umar, is education. People need to understand that there is COVID-19 around, there is a realistic risk for it, and that it can affect all of us. 
and that uh, once we know the risk then we need to understand uh, in its own in its own personal uh, context that what is my risk what is the risk to my family and my uh, parents and then you know then we need to devise a strategy for all of us overall we need to get this message across to our people this covid-19 has come back it is our sixth a wave although it hasn't been officially declared yet but you know it has again started to rise of course uh, and it is still among our community all right now the ncoc dr saab has issued certain guidelines as far as uh, eid ul azha is concerned as well as uh, sacrifice or the qurbani i'd like to cite some of them and uh, take your point of view on that eid ul azha prayers and qurbani uh, assume greater importance so of course eid prayers will be organized in open spaces under stringent covid protocols in case of a compulsion to offer prayers inside mosques all the doors and windows should remain open for ventilation two to three prayers should be organized at uh, at one place so that uh, a certain number of people can offer their prayers and uh, uh, they can do this in a secure environment all ulama should be sensitized to keep sermons short so that people don't have to stay in closed spaces for a longer time elderly sick and young children discouraged from uh, attending congregations no one will be allowed to enter mosques without masks separate entry and exit points at the venue to avoid jumbling up of individuals and mosques should ensure social distancing of at least 6 feet between worshipers to avoid physical contact this and more and also that there should be uh, avoidance of shaking hands as much as possible uh, can these guidelines be followed in letter and spirit what's your take on that well that is a very very difficult question umar i think it is uh, it uh, you know realistically it will be difficult to uh, follow each and every guideline to its true letter and spirit in every part of pakistan in every mosque but mm. you know uh, even if we manage to implement uh, you know 70 80% of these advices in a significant number of mosques around pakistan we need to remember that this there will be a significant effect on the amount of people who catch covid during this because mm. as we all know you know we all are very um, passionate about eid ul azha everyone goes to to the mosque and and you know if if uh, you know the our Uh, just like the guidelines say that you know if we can sensitize our ulama you know there should be multiple uh, prayers and there should be social distancing you know we can um, put on our masks and uh, and you know the sermons being short all of these we should remember is is within the teachings of islam you know islam um advises us to exercise precaution when there's a pandemic around and and you know this will have a long term benefit so not only do the ulama need to um you know remember these guidelines and try to implement that as much as possible but education sec education you know educated sections of the society they need to uh, you know Uh, try and uh, you know apply these Dr. in Sir, our mosques. Very interesting. Well. You say educated sections of the society, but unfortunately, we have a lot of educated people who are completely ignorant of facts like this, or or turn a blind eye to this, which leads to an increase in the number of cases. So I call them uh, uneducated, educated people. and that is uh, there is a large majority of that not only in pakistan but across the world as well you remember the anti vaxxers in the us and uh, other parts of uh, the world who refused to even wear masks when the number of cases were increasing by the 100 and the thousands every day yes i mean that is a challenge that has been the challenge throughout the pandemic not only in pakistan but all around the world in europe uk america just like you said and and this is a war that will have to be continue to be fought on all mm. fronts you know just like mm. you are doing this program this will inshallah you know um, give education to a lot of people you know of newspapers you know mosques you know all of these avenues need to be used at government level you know at media level at you know at even at individual level you know I, we are all um, responsible for our society so if we all do fight together I, you know i am quite optimistic that you know we did it before you know we defeated the covid um the previous uh, course, waves we did. and i am optimistic that we will do it again inshallah right, doctor saab i'd like to ask your point of view on the guidelines that regard the uh, uh, sacrifice of the animals on this eid ul azha and uh, under the wake of the increasing number of cases i'd like to understand how important they are and how relevant they are as well a uh, the ulama and religious scholars have been told to encourage people for collective and online 
uh, sacrifice or qurbani provinces have been told to initiate awareness campaigns to educate the masses on the spread of the virus while they distribute the meat amongst the different people the site of slaughtering should be at least at a certain distance from the residential areas or a, a wide open space where they can do that crowding at the site should be avoided a limited number of people allowed no entry inside cattle markets without masks do you feel uh, these are relevant important and applicable yes i would say that you know this is obviously sacrificing the animals is, is an integral part of this eid and uh, you know this is this acts as a social occasion as well and uh, you know the all these guidelines will help you know decrease the spread of not only covid-19 but also congo virus as well which has been reported uh, in in pakistan and uh, similarly we should uh, try to buy Uh, animals that are uh, looking healthy and not unhealthy mm. you know and if we follow these up you know we I would, i would like to say here that the role of ncoc throughout this pandemic over over the last two years has been exemplary and it has been cited all over the world you know how good our ncoc has been in anticipating these problems and in issuing guidelines in time and and uh, managing to curb these viruses so uh, you know we should all praise and coc and follow its guidelines to the spread as much as possible all right on a side note apart from covid uh, you talked about congo fever i'd like to also have your point of view on certain guidelines that have been put forward before buying a sacrificial animals people should be uh, should ensure that there are no ticks on the bodies of animals use gloves Uh, to apply certain lotions when checking the animal prevent children from playing with the animals use pesticides in consultation with the livestock department and butchers should use gloves when slaughtering animals and making meat children always uh, you know play with the sacrificial animals we've always seen that i've played with that as a kid as well can you prevent the children from playing uh, with the animals and secondly uh, uh, do you feel more prevention is needed for congo fever we don't have as many cases as we have of covid what's your take on that Yes I mean the the risk is I would say the risk is small but the risk is there and uh, right. you know as as much as possible we should follow these guidelines yes it is sometimes difficult to keep the children away from from the sacrificial animals because that is the main event of the eid as we all know but mm-hmm. uh, you know as as parents as soon as long as we are educated we will uh, hopefully make it a priority to to keep them away and uh, you know when we buy the animals again as 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 you rightly said they should need to be healthy and uh, and clear of all ticks all right uh, dr saab finally Uh, do you feel that a country like Pakistan can manage to control this sixth wave of COVID that has entered the country, and of course the number of cases are increasing? And if so, what what would be the two or three main guidelines that you'd propose to the general public who are watching this show? Yes, I mean, the, first of all, I think the most important thing is education. As we know, this is now BA four and five, which is a sub variant of Omicron virus. Uh, the problem is that this is more slippery and more stealthy in terms of immunity the immunity that our population has acquired from previous mm. infections and from mm. previous vaccination is not as effective against these viruses so people are getting affected second and third times in the getting infected but the good thing is it's not as serious like the previous viruses uh, but you know as long as we understand that the virus is around as long as we understand that there is a risk as long as we understand that the risk is different for different people and individual people understand how much risk i personally have and then mm. after that i would say to our people that you know uh, don't stop living but keep it in your mind you know and and if you are have comorbidities if you have parents who are elderly then you know you should try to avoid crowded places then you should try to put on face mask wash your hands and follow ncoc guidelines and also we should also remember the ncoc has uh, issued a new guideline to say that now we can have the second booster dose so if uh, you know you got vaccinated more than 4 months ago you can go again to the uh, nearest vaccination center and get vaccinated again as another booster and there is good evidence to show that these vaccinations will improve your immunity although I, we know that this course. immunity will be short lived mm-hmm. and uh, there will still be some escape but it still helps All right. So, you, of course, we need to get ourselves vaccinated and boosted. And for the record, I'd like to also tell you and our viewers that I've gotten my second booster shot the day before yesterday in the F9 park, and it was a very easy procedure. And it uh, the whole thing goes uh, in five minutes. And you need to take that because you need to prevent yourselves and those around you from uh, further spread of COVID-19. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Sardar Shoaib Saab, uh, to have joined us and to have talked to us about the importance of to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in the wake of Eid Al-Adha that is around the corner. 
and of course uh, be very careful not only for COVID-19 but also for Congo uh, virus. We need to be careful and when we are careful collectively that is how we prevent our society and our nation from uh, uh, having more of such cases. Our second segment ladies and gentlemen concerns Eid al-Azha. Now on Sunday we are going to mashallah all celebrate inshallah as, as we say Eid al-Azha uh, in Pakistan. Uh, the sacrifices will be made. People have also uh, asked for part I mean different uh, portions of uh, meat in cows I mean this those who cannot afford full cows or uh, full lambs this is what they are doing as well uh, sacrifice is important but sacrifice of uh, your needs is also important sacrifice for for the sake of the whole uh, essence and philosophy of Eid al Azha is also extremely important and of course Hajj uh, uh, has started 1 million Muslims are marking the largest Islamic pilgrimage since COVID-19 a lot of people are there from Pakistan also there is a contingent to talk about both these issues we've been joined in the studios by uh, Dr. Kamal Kaiser she's an Islamic scholar Dr. Saiba thank you very much to have joined us Assalamu alaikum thank you for the invitation uh, Dr. Saiba first of all uh, general questions a lot of questions that come to my mind and I'm sure to others who are watching the show. Let's start with Eid al-Azha and sacrifice. Okay. A lot of people have questions whether they are entitled to sacrifice or not. What is the main entitlement to it? For example, a lot of people say we don't earn enough, for example, to uh, put maybe a portion of meat for, uh, for in a cow or in a lamb or uh, we cannot because we have other responsibilities. Who needs to really take part in the sacrifice of animals? Okay, let me explain this um, uh, very logically. Hmm. Um, there is, when we talk about religion, so we have a ritual and we have a spirit of it. Hmm. Sometimes what happens is either there's a category of people who will pick up the ritual and they'll be like sticking to that ritual. Hmm. There's another category of people who would be just looking at the spirit and then they'll be making their own way out of it. Basically, in every given situation, whatever we come across in our deen, we have to combine both of them. And then we have to look at the practices of our dearest Prophet Wasallam, how he implemented it. Like, uh, was there an appropriate balance of the spirit as well as the ritual? So when it comes to the sacrifice, this is like the, the benchmark practice of the Prophet and uh, even the companions and the people before hmm. as many as we remember that this question is something which has struck us in recent times hmm. when we have started questioning many things related to religion and that is why either we are concerned about the financial aspect of hmm. it sometimes we're concerned about the poverty that we look around hmm. sometimes we are concerned about like you know such similar factors where we feel why sacrifice so many animals when we can use that money in a better way. Hmm. But in our religion, we find out that Prophet Sallallahu no, Alaihi has emphasized on need of this thing. So how do we explain it? Basically, the word sacrifice, when we look at uh, the Arabic dictionary, it is Qurbani. Hmm. And it is coming from the word Qurb. Hmm. Qurb means to draw closeness to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So basically what we're doing is, through this sacrifice, we are trying to achieve uh, another status of relationship with the higher being. Mm. Okay? So this is not about what you can afford or what you cannot afford. But obviously I'll come to the, the realistic side of it. Mm. Um, when people ask me that if I'm not able to afford, so I ask them, okay, do you have a checklist with you? Mm. And my checklist is how many times you eat out Mm. Because these days when you have just one meal, mm. you order pizza or you have mm. some snacks mm. and it's, it's a good amount that of you're course, spending. Of course. Okay? And then um, do you plan to like um, when you're planning your vacation or you're going out somewhere. So where is your money going? Mm. If you feel that we are not actually eating out much or very rarely, uh, we haven't taken vacation for a long time and especially COVID has hit people hard. Mm. Mm. So if you feel that, yes, I cannot afford, it's your relationship with uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. So you, you're answerable to him. You don't have to go around explaining to people how much money you have in your pocket or what are your resources. You just work on that relationship and that's it. Mm. Very interestingly, there was a man who came to the Prophet in his times and mm. he said that I cannot afford to uh, make that sacrifice. So he said, okay, be party with us. And like we know that someone who has to make this, um, uh, this sacrifice, they are not supposed to trim their um, nails and mm. also cut their hair. So he said, you be party in that part. 
so it will be counted as if you have done the sacrifice all right all okay. right so Do Do dr kaval there is also also another question that a lot of hmm. people ask and that is a uh, in the in the previous times people uh, people those people who can afford they sacrifice entire cows or lambs or other sacrificial animals but those who cannot uh, uh, put their uh, part in the sacrifice of a cow uh, for example i know a lot of people who put a certain amount because they can't afford it uh, religiously it is it is being told to us that these animals will help us cross the pulisarath uh, on the day of judgment but if we put portions in it will that animal still help us yeah, because i mean that portion has been uh, told to us from from the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he has categorized it All if right. you are sacrificing a lamb or a, a sheep or a goat mm. so it goes for the one person or the All whole right. family okay. okay but if there is a cow or there is a camel hmm. so in camel we have 10 shares hmm. and in cow we have eight uh, seven shares all right so that that is something which these has these shares are already. predetermined yes these right. are predetermined and that is why we don't have to like you know feel something like i'm inferior in any way if i am hmm. putting in a share that's what i'm saying that it depends how much you can manage hmm. like i know some people and i myself sometimes do it when i feel that i'm running short of cash i start saving for uh, the sacrifice three months ahead all right it's not like surprise one day we get up and it's eid ul adha and mm. we are looking everybody knows it happens we once know. a year yes mm -hmm. and uh, people uh, i know a lot of ladies what they do is when they want to buy some furniture or they want to like you know get something in their life so they pool money mm. and they have those kitty parties where they mm. are always uh, pooling in money and they're saving for mm -hmm. whatever they hmm. want to have hmm. so this should be like a sort of a dream project for all the believers that i need to make utmost effort hmm. to save that money and make that sacrifice why hmm. because the spirit is important and there are two aspects of that spirit one thing the in islam it's the concept of umma concept of unity we are not divided there is a huge group of people who are there performing hajj hmm. so we watch them on our tv screens and we know a lot of our relatives are there so we want to be part of that activity how can we be part of that activity from our home ground we are part of that activity because we are fasting on that day that is yawm e arafa then uh, when they are making the hajj sacrifice over there we are also part of that hajj sacrifice so the concept is that we are all in it together all right we feel a uh, same uh, sort of sentiment another important aspect if we go into the history of it is that this was the sacrifice which was made by ibrahim alaihi salam and um the important thing again is all the divine scriptures they talk about ibrahim alaihi salam and they they all say that he is one of the prophet who gets this acknowledgement from everyone hmm. so he was there was a time when he was asked to make sacrifice uh for his uh, on, on his son mm. and he did not like have hesitate second for a single thoughts. moment no mm. not at all mm. so this is like a concept that we are supposed to uh sort of you know practice and revive every year mm. that uh when he was ready to sacrifice his son allah subhanahu wa taala didn't need his son he just wanted to see the attitude exactly it's the essence is the soul is the philosophy behind it that is more important do people still understand the philosophy or the essence of eid ul adha or is it just for them sacrificing animals and eating lot of lots of meat i think people uh, or families i would say where we have elders who are reminding their youngsters about this the whole the spirit as well as the ritual they do practice it and mm. they do enjoy it mm. uh, but in those families where we are only looking around as a trend setter mm. thing so obviously the spirit would be missing out and and another important thing is that while we are making the sacrifice we have to remind ourselves am i sacrificing my bad habits mm. am i sacrificing to take care of other people around me mm. am i sacrificing uh, for my country for the muslim umma for you know there's so many needs where it doesn't have to be about me and mm. you would notice that now we are entering those very difficult times when everyone is asking what's in it for me mm. That so is this so is kind true. of the culture that Islam uh, sort of discourages. All and right. Every year through this Eid ul Adha, we are reminded about the unity, the concept mm. of it's not about me, it's about us, mm. and we are all in it together. And as a professional, as a doctor, um, we need vitamin B12. Mm. True. This is like a micronutrient that we must have. Uh, very interestingly, one of my friends, she ran a survey a couple of years back. what she did was she gathered about 100 housemates in one of the elite areas in islamabad and she asked them she gave them a list of all the uh, like if if you have money what are you going to buy 
and they were like we'll buy dal chawal roti mm -hmm. whatever and fix our house and this and that but uh, the meat was like not on the list then she asked them that do you get to eat meat they said no we don't buy meat but when we are working in someone's house and they serve us meat that's all the meat we use and then she asked them that uh, what you, how do you look forward to meat or how would you get this meat and they all most of them in fact most of them they said that uh, we get this meat through this eat all right so it is one of the occasions when those who cannot afford the meat yes. get uh, the the opportunity to eat meat for a couple of days yeah. uh, speaking of these uh, this uh, meat and of course giving it to the poor what does the religion say about the portions of meat uh, of the animal that you have sacrificed how do you need to divide it okay um by large we have been told that we can divide it into three portions mm. save one for ourselves give one to the poor and needy and one for the relatives but there is no hard and fast rule if you feel that uh, your family cannot afford it you can keep the whole meat for yourself for the whole family it could be like a joint family system or a bigger family um you could give all the meat to the poor people all right so there is no compulsion of either giving everything or keeping everything yeah. but the point is again someone who is keeping the meat shouldn't feel guilty about it someone mm. who is like giving it away shouldn't feel take so much pride in it that you are all going around and you are giving the guilt to other people who mm. are keeping the meat mm. so it's it's okay it's again it's about uh, what you see what you are the learning from the whole thing mm. so that is it what is important all right but in this day and age do we st uh, still continue to learn about the different aspects of sacrifice because sacrifice is not just of the animal sacrifice is also sometimes of all the uh, bad thoughts that you have yeah. in your mind all the anti religious our desires, our desires yes. that uh, do not uh, comply with uh, our religion are concerned do people still understand the whole concept of it all and if so uh, uh, what do they need to do those who do not understand what do they need to do to revitalize themselves maybe i example? think they need to watch your show <laughs> right. or watch similar shows where uh, the these such aspects are mm. being highlighted so that okay. um they can like you know revise this concept mm. like even when i'm coming over the this uh, show and i'm reading about it so i'm like more motivated now to all right uh, so every time like you know when you are performing something mm. you read about it okay and you sit down with your family or you sit down with scholars and you go to massage then you mm. talk to the scholars and mm. try to understand and that's what the scholars are doing they are talking about all this all right but um, as i said that our youth sometimes is not interested in learning about it mm. so we need to have uh, frequent shows or frequent uh, things like we need to create hype about it exactly. a lot of marketing understanding exactly there. about proper understanding through the proper uh, persons is just like yourself now uh, there are certain protocols that are, yeah. have been put as far as uh, covid 19 is concerned and uh, the congregations on eid ul adha and of course the the sacrifice as you were hearing while i was talking to dr shoaib in the first segment uh, a lot of people for example when you go to big congregations on eid refuse to wear masks yeah. they say you know this this does not comply with religion how true or untrue is that i would say that um, uh, islam is a very practical religion mm. and um, the islamic principle tell us that when there is some sort of a disease which is communicable disease which is spreading out to community like that it has become a pandemic and it has killed so many people so yes sops should be in place and if there is nothing haram in it hmm. nothing which is like going against the religion so hmm. we should be complying by that so wearing of mask does not have any anti religious sentiment to it no it doesn't okay because a lot of people you know this is something that i really wanted to highlight because a lot of people even when i go to mosque to uh, to uh, say my prayers say why are you wearing a mask and i say because i have to follow the sops and say no 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 you cannot you know uh, normally it's true you should not wear in the in the mosque i mean that is why i wanted to have a very uh, practical uh, you know uh, point of view from your end also today is the hajj 1 million muslims are marking the last Is islamic pilgrimage it's covid uh, 19 you talked about fasting on the day of arafat Is, can we also fast as, yes, uh, as we, are we are going to fast they are not fasting okay they are gathered uh, in the that the whole the place which is arafat mm. and what we find out from one of the narrations of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that this is one day that allah subhanahu wa taala Uh, uh, let's go of so many people who are crying over there who are pouring out their heart who are who are regretful about their sins hmm. and allah is forgiving them hmm. and this is one day when shaitan is very upset the hmm. devil is very upset that he had always been like making people do like fool around with their hmm. desires and emotions but now they have come back uh, hmm. in that religious attire 
So, um, how we become party to that is again we uh, on our not mm. because they are having this Yom Arafah today. Mm -hmm. So, we will see the local day which is mm. the 9th of Zilhijjah. Tomorrow. And we are tomorrow and mm. we are going to fast. All right. And again from one narration we find out that this one day when we fast this is expiation of the sins previous one year and the next year. Oh, all come. right. Yeah. So it's a very Not the major sins, but uh, mm. all the minor sins. I mean, right. so, so many times when we are making conscious effort, even then we do something which exactly. might not be right. Exactly. And we do, sometimes we don't even know that we are committing a sin, in fact, and we are doing that. Yeah. Uh, those people who cannot afford to go for uh, for Hajj, and because Hajj is one of the five pillars of Islam, Dr. Saiba, the fact remains that a lot of people want to go, but cannot because of uh, economic compulsions they, uh, or other reasons, or they are sick. Is it a real compulsion to perform Hajj despite your economic issues or despite the fact that you are, have a physical handicap? No, the Hajj is uh, compulsory on all the people who can afford and there is a big list which include finances. Hmm. Uh, for females it includes that they have a male uh, partner to accompany them, mahram hmm. to accompany them. Then again the sickness and there's so many other criteria which is given. So um, whenever you know somebody wants to go for Hajj and they're like I cannot afford it, so I tell them that uh, look, you you will be still getting the reward of it mm. because Allah knows that uh, you cannot afford. And in these times, uh, with all the inflation and everything, so the prices have really gone exactly. up. Exactly. Really gone up. And a mm. lot of people who previously did plan to go and they thought that they'll be able to afford the tickets, they're not able to manage it now. So that's okay. Either you can keep saving. And the, I, I still remember that uh, now is the time when people travel a lot. But when I was young, so people would save all their life. Mm. And to go for Hajj once they, they are retired, Hajj, maybe. Yes, yes. Mm. Um, I was just watching yesterday. There was a uh, someone was interviewing this person, probably from some African country, and mm. he was crying and he said that I sold my house mm. to come for Hajj. Right. And someone said, "Why did you sell your house? Mm. You didn't have to." Mm. And he started crying and he said, "I wanted to come here. This was mm. my dream project." Mm. So I think it all depends. It's it's uh, not only personal; it's also religious. Yes. But also sometimes the personal over overwhelms the religious, yeah. and even when you don't, you you create uh, some kind of mechanism or mechanism so that you can go and perform Hajj. If you cannot perform Hajj, is there some kind of an alternative so that you can maybe help people and maybe Allah might you know compensate you one of way course, or the other. Of course, of course. I mean like all the things that we know uh, we, we can be helping out people, reaching out people, praying for mm. one thing because this is part of the five pillars now. Mm. So you focus on the rest of the four pillars. Mm. The first is the shahada that mm. is I'm going to lead my life according to Quran and Sunnah then mm. praying five mm. times a day then keeping your fast in the month of Ramadan. Mm. Then if uh, the zakat is due on you, mm. then you give out that charity. So if you are doing all those things and for genuine reasons you cannot go for Hajj, so Allah knows best. All right. All right. Uh, also, I'd like to understand uh, mm. the, the whole concept of Eid al-Azha also teaches uh, eradication of selfishness from, uh, yes. from individuals. In this day and era, when almost every second or third person that you meet uh, shows some degree of selfishness, how can religion help those? Actually, uh, what we need to do is have a lot of self-awareness. This is what the religion tells us. Mm. Like, rather than peeking into everyone's window and trying to label people, calling someone hypocrite and calling someone you are too bad or you're not, you're a kafir or whatsoever. Mm peek inside and try to work on your own personality, mm. your own self. And when we start looking inside, that's when we want to reach out and help people. Mm. Another important thing is strong connection with Quran. The, the moment you study Quran and you read it with translation, that's where you get that intrinsic motivation that mm. I need to go and reach out to other people. Mm. And what's the reward of it? And mm. how much a benefit it brings in my life? Uh, very surprisingly, now you talk to uh, some experts and they say that the moment you start helping and reaching out people, there is release of serotonin, which is a happiness hormone mm. in your body. Mm. And that gives you a feeling of relaxation, that gives you a feeling of peace, that brings uh, so much like inner satisfaction in you, which when you are self-centered for your own needs, you don't get it. Mm. So a lot of time you will see that someone comes with depression and anxiety and the expert would say, go out and... Work help, with, people. Uh, help people, mm. work in different organizations mm. and that's what sometimes people do. You will mm. see around globally that people they have earned so much money, they have made so much name and fame and then they want to do something special. Mm. 
that those is things true. are not actually giving them that satisfaction. That, that is so true. And I think more and more people need to involve themselves as a community gesture yeah. to help others in need. There are so many different NGOs and organizations that are working round the clock to help uh, the needy and the unfortunate, whether it be widows, children, uh, the elderly. And there are so many elderly homes here as well in, in Pakistan now. And it's, it's extremely important, I feel, as individuals, as Pakistanis, to help those who are around us who are in need come into another aspect, uh, Dr. Saiba, of uh, the sacrifice and the sacrificial animals in that respect. Amongst the uh, guidelines for the uh, sacrifice is that uh, the sacrifice needs to happen away from residential areas in open areas. What does religion tell us as far as the whole uh, or, uh, or the whole uh, element of sacrifice is concerned? Actually, uh, when we talk about sacrifice or for that matter, any ritual that we perform, safety is the most important element. Safety, like for particularly when we talk about sacrifice, so safety of animal, mm. safety of the people who are involved with that uh, sacrificial process, mm. and then the whole community. Mm. So uh, I'm like in the uh, now right now there are uh, COVID protocols which have been released. So mm. it is important for all of us to be making sure, ensuring it has to be individual's job mm. because obviously the SOPs have been given to us. Mm. So if we don't perform, we are going to spread the diseases. But why are we not following the SOPs, Dr. Zaba? I, and this question is to you as a doctor as well as a religious scholar. A lot of people cite religion as a, as a reason uh, to not follow the SOPs. And a lot of people say there is no COVID. How do you uh, make them understand? Okay, first I'll give the religious answer. A um, lot of time when people say that I'll have full reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mm. If he wills, I'm not going to get sick. Hmm. But oh, I've this, heard so many times this, this phrase. So um, I always quote this hadith, the narration of the Prophet ﷺ, where a man came to him and he said, oh, I have a, t a camel and I would need to sit and talk to you. So should I tie the camel first or talk to you first? And he said, tie the camel. Eqalaha wa tawakkal. Hmm. And then have reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what we do is we always take care of uh, whatever is important. Hmm. where there are risk factors involved or there are dangers involved. We take all the precautionary measures and then we rely on Allah hmm. We don't rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by letting go of everything hmm. and creating a lot of you mischief for problems in life. Hmm. True. Uh, from medical perspective, again, I would also say that um, I think uh, since people have seen very difficult time for the last three years, hmm. so they sort of are... Uh, sick of the whole situation hmm. and uh, there are so many crises that people are going through uh, which includes uh, financial as well as mental health challenges hmm. Hmm. and um, and then they get confused because social media is so active one day and so many conspiracy theories on social media yes. Dr. Saiba. and because of that they're so confused they don't know that whom to listen to hmm. and again we get this very strong guideline uh, from uh, all the experts that go for the right references hmm. please don't listen to everything that is being said on the social media by anyone a b c d who come out as an expert mm. they need to watch authentic shows authentic people mm. and they then they need to like decide i mean you need to go to a doctor mm. you cannot go to a darzi to of ask course, them of course. for covid should we do this or not exactly you need to go to like if you want to talk about the animal uh, challenges or their diseases then a veterinary doctor is the one who mm. could give you the right advice mm. So that's the problem, like anyone can post anything on the social media and then everyone is like caught yeah, up in that. Exactly, and nobody the verifies forward whether they... The ver forward movement is exactly, there. Exactly, exactly. Even on WhatsApp and yeah. other uh, formats of social media. Now, uh, another question which is kind of related to COVID-19, not very much to Eidul Hazza, but nevertheless indirectly it is, vaccination. A lot of people, whether it be polio, or whether uh, for their children or whether it be COVID-19, say that the vaccines are uh, against the injunctions of Islam. What does religion tell us about vaccines and vaccination? For one thing, Islam doesn't stop us if there is uh, a research-based data which tells us that we need to get vaccinated mm. because, and if we try to compare it with the times, uh, older times, and we say there were not many diseases over there, but the times were different, environment was different, uh, challenges were different. And um, in nowhere in Quran and Sunnah we have been told that if there is a disease and there is a, a, a something for its protection or its care, we should no go, not go for it. Mm. Especially scientific-based data. Again, I would go for that evidence-based data. Right. Like a lot of time when people talk about vaccine, they are like they are probably putting in some chip in us. Mm. And I'm like, we are carrying this chip in the form of a phone in mm. our hands, mm. um, and everyone knows our information. I mean, exactly. getting my information through my ID card is easy. Mm. Through my bank Bank transaction is easy. Um, anyone can get my information. So, and if I am 
transparent, mm. I have some integrity inside out, then why I need to be worried about any chip? Mm. What difference would it make? Of course. That, that's like my, I say, okay, let's think of the worst scenario as mm, well. True. And secondly, even for the polio, like a lot of time when people uh, would talk to me that why should we give this uh, polio drops again and again? And I tell mm. them that if you actually want to see the problems that people have with polio, you need to go to the hospitals mm. because we have worked in hospitals mm. and we see how many children they get crippled for life just because they did not get those few drops. Mm. That is so true, but the fact remains that you know a lot of people are ignorant of it or turn uh, their uh, their uh, their eye towards uh, some other forms of uh, information that they've received from other fora. Yeah. What is the best uh, information when it comes to COVID-19, when it comes to Eid al-Azha or Hajj? What does should one rely to if one had to look to towards information? as far as the literature is concerned. Okay. Um, one of the most authentic sites is islamqa.com. All right. So this is like one of the one of the most authentic platform mm. that one can approach. Um, then uh, there are uh, other organizations mm. and there are authentic organizations you can mm. go and you can check out with them. Okay. And you would notice that all the ulama, the uh, you know, there's a body of the scholars, they would also keep telling you on different social media platforms as well that uh, please get yourself vaccinated. Please, safety is very mm, important mm, mm. Uh, for all the people. Mm. But sometimes people don't listen to that. True. So uh, that's why it is very, very important that remember like in last two, three years when we were, the Hajj restrictions were there. Mm. So people were angry on that as well. Mm. But it is important to safeguard human life. Of course. And it is important also to understand that safeguarding human life and also those of uh, those of the animals as well yes. uh, is, is extremely important. If you feel some kind of disease, uh, some kind of animal is disease, you need to take the necessary precautions before yeah. you sacrifice that animal as uh, ha has been enunciated in the SOPs for uh, uh, the different diseases that pertain to animals. Thank you very much, Dr. Kaval Kaysar, mm -hmm. Islamic scholar, to have joined us and to have given us so much time to talk about the different complexities and the different questions that people have around Eid al -Azha, around sacrifice, around Hajj and, uh, and so much more. Thank you so very much to yeah. have given us the time, Dr. Saiba. Let's come very quickly to our last uh, story and that concerns the sixth martyrdom anniversary of Burhan Wani. Uh, uh, Resistance Day is being uh, uh, celebrated today, uh, that is Friday, to remember the tech-savvy Kashmiri movement icon on his sixth martyrdom anniversary. Uh, we also know that July 13 is going to be Kashmir Martyrs Day in the memory of 22 people who fell to the bullets of Maharaja's troops in Srinagar in 1931. Now, the Resistance Day, that is today, is uh, being commemorated to A, pay tribute to Burhan Wani and his fellows in particular, and all the martyrs in general, B, reiterate commitment for continuing the freedom struggle, and C, remind the world of its promises that has been made to Kashmir. So many resolutions are there in uh, the United Nations as far as the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir is concerned, but no possible... Uh, uh, or tangible action has been taken. India continues its uh, belligerent actions uh, uh, as far as the people in Indian legally occupied Jammu and Kashmir are concerned. Those who try to raise a voice are muted. Those who try to express the truth of what is happening within India and in illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir are either incarcerated or uh, uh, other measures are put on them or they're completely um, uh, blocked from all social media platforms where they uh, express their points of views. There are so many journalists who have, put be, uh, who have been put behind bars and all of this movement this strong movement that emanated in the last few years began with the martyrdom of Burhan Wani. Burhan Wani uh, has become that symbol of uh, Kashmiri liberation and of uh, the Kashmir movement. And we really hope that some kind of a solution comes as far as uh, the people in illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir is concerned. At least give them the right to decide what they want to do through the plebiscit, uh, the, their right through self-determination. On this very day, we make that pledge that inshallah the world will and should listen to this. With that, we come to an end of uh, today's newsroom. Uh, Eid is around the corner, so Eid ul Azha Mubarak in advance to all of you who are watching. Be very careful. That is why we had this show today, to have different uh, opinions and points of views as far as the uh, options concerning Eid ul Azha and Hajj are concerned. Uh, and of course, follow the SOP so that less and less cases of COVID-19 emerge in the days to come. Have a great weekend and have a wonderful Eid. We'll see you inshallah on Monday with a great Eid show. Allah Hafiz. Thank you.